still exist, a church in a one-room schoolhouse. You'll see both of them in a moment. The factory completed in 1905, and then they started building this unique model town around it. And then around November of 1906, the Philadelphia and Reading Railroad, which was also a trolley line, they put a trolley stop at the factory. Now trolley lines would name their stops. So they got that in, looked around, said there's not a lot here to name a stop after except Milton Hershey and the factory. So they called their trolley stop Hershey. And that is one of the ways we ended up with our name. But I'm curious, how many of you have never been to Hershey before? Well, maybe over half of you raised your hand. The rest of you? I hate to disappoint you, but I really doubt if you've ever been to Hershey either. Reason? Legally and officially, the town of Hershey does not even exist. It was never incorporated as a town. Today, you are officially in what's called Derry Township. Our population is about 25,000. Our taxes, our police department, our public schools are all Derry Township. We have no mayor. We're run by a township council headed up by a township manager. The only way that any of you could officially go to Hershey, you would have to step inside that post office I pointed out earlier. We're on the map, GPS, MapQuest, just like your town or any other town in the country. You get the name of your town from the U.S. Postal Service. So when you go home, your friends say, where'd you go Monday? You can look at them and go, I have no idea. I just found out where I thought it was. It's not even there. Yeah, you notice we have chocolate geese? Yeah, those are cool, aren't they? It's Canadian chocolate. Yeah, they have dark chocolate heads, milk chocolate bodies, and white chocolate bellies. Rich said to tell you kids that if you want the geese, uh, bring your parents over here on your way home, pick them all up. He said, don't all leave any. He did say to warn you, though, that when you came and got the geese, those were not milk duds in the grass. Today it's called Dairy Church. We get our name from that building to the left front of the trolley, that limestone building setting on the ridge. The Dairy Presbyterian Church, it's one of the oldest churches in the country. It was founded in 1724, and it gets its name Dairy from the Irish who settled here from the northern part of Ireland, the little town of Dairy, D-E-R-R-Y came here in the 1700s to escape religious persecution. To the right front of the trolley, the High Point Mansion. Named High Point, that's where it sits on that hill overlooking where the old factory used to be. This is a 22-room Colonial Revival native limestone mansion that Milton built for Kitty. They are the only two people to ever live in this home, and this is important, folks. The grounds and the home are closed to the public. They don't want you driving or walking up here. You will get run off. You might even get a fine. The trolley, we have a contract with them. It gives us exclusive permission to drive up here so that you can get a close-up view of Milton and Kitty's home. We'll stop here and you can take some pictures. One of the reasons they don't want you here is the golf course. This is the west course of the Hershey Country Club from 1941 to 51. The club pro here was Ben Hogan. So we have a lot of golf history in our town. Milton loved golf. He wasn't good at it. But Rich said he found out Milton kept a set of clubs at the mansion, and he also kept a set in his office at the factory. That way he could play in between on his way to and from work or on a break. He said he also found out Milton always kept an extra pair of trousers in his golf bag in case he got a hole in one. Oh. <laughs> I warn him they don't get any better. The main reason they don't want you up here is today the high point is offices of the Hershey Trust. That is the company I told you about. They handle all of the money for the school that was Kitty's idea from her home today. And that trust that Milton Hershey established in 1918 of $60 million today is sitting close to $15 billion. It is the largest privately endowed school of its kind in the world. It is also the largest private residential school of its kind. When the mansion was completed in 1908, Mr. Hershey did not mortgage it. He probably did what all of you did when you bought your first house. He just sat down, wrote out a check, and paid for it. His check was made out in the amount of $53,433. They say the home is priceless today. One of the seven one-room schoolhouses Milton attended by the fourth grade is to the left front of the trolley in the hollow, the Dairy Church School. He was in class in that building in 1863, the year of the Battle of Gettysburg. Now, Kitty died in 1915, devastated by her death and all the great memories of Kitty. In early 1916, Milton said, I have to leave this area. He packed up some items, boarded up the mansion, and he went to Cuba. 
he was going to build a resort, but he had taken Mama Hershey with him. They stepped off the boat at Cuba, Mama looked around, looked at Milton and said, son, you need to look around and see what's here. Think about those sugar bills that plagued you all those years and caused your failures. You should spend your money more wisely. Well, guess what? Children on the trolley, are y'all listening? Yeah. At age 59, Mr. Hershey still listened to his mother. <laughs> And he purchased over 60,000 acres of sugar plantation fields in Cuba. He was appalled by the living conditions there. He immediately built them a hospital, homes for the workers, schools for their children, and even an orphanage like the one in Hershey. As that town in Cuba grew, it resembled this town so close, they named it Central Hershey, Cuba. It is still there today. The company has no holdings any longer. Today, it's part of Santa Cruz del Norte. It sits about 25 miles east of Havana. He amassed another fortune and became one of the world's largest sugar suppliers. But in 1929, the Depression hit, and he said, I'm going home. I will not let people in this town suffer unemployment like the rest of the country was suffering. He took the profits from his sugar business in Cuba and went on a massive building campaign, building no less than seven major building projects here in those 10 years. And I'll show you and tell you about those projects in a moment. On the left, you'll get to see the front of those three executive mansions, still beautiful homes today. You have your cameras ready. Coming into view to the right front will be our famous Hershey cocoa bushes. They're not really cocoa bushes, they're red barberry bushes. They were planted here in 1909. I'll tell you a secret about them. Those bushes were genetically altered to grow out of the ground in the shape of letters. <laughs> it's amazing what you can do with modern technology today. Uh -huh. I did have a lady several years ago on my trolley. We came by there and she hollered out and said, Fred, what do you do if a letter dies? I had no idea what to tell her. But I had Rich with me and this man will give you an answer for anything. He said, Fred, Letter dies, you go down to the Hershey Nursery. He said, there's a very nice lady who works there part-time. She'll give you any letter you want. What was her name? Vanna. Vanna White. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's a nice lady who wears a new dress every day. It's amazing. 1929. Starts building with the profits from Cuba. The cornerstone, you've already seen it. You get another view of it coming up on your left. The community center where the theater is completed in 1932. In 1933, they built the Hotel Hershey. We're going up close to the hotel in a moment. 34, they built Senior Hall of the Milton Hershey School. If you look to your right, that limestone part of the factory was added on in 1935. Today, it is the uh, offices for the corporate global sales of uh, the Hershey Company. 36, the arena at the park. 37, the Rose Gardens were started. And in 39, they ended with the stadium at the park. And in those 10 years, no one here lost their job or took a salary cut. Employment had almost doubled. Now you think about this man who only had a fourth grade education. He knew how to do things. Early one morning in 1932, he got on board a trolley right downtown close to where we are. He rode it up the hill. Look to your right. Behind the trees there, you'll get a quick view of the hotel. Your best view of it is right here at the center section, so keep looking right. We're going up close to it. He rolled a trolley up there. They were breaking ground for that building that morning. Milton got off of the trolley. The foreman of the job site was all excited and said, we're doing great. We're using a machine called a steam shovel. shovel. It'll do the work of 40 men. And Mr. Hershey said, wonderful, get rid of it. He said, tomorrow morning, you make sure 40 men have jobs. That's one of the ways he kept people working. On your right, you get a nice view of that limestone office complex. To the left of the limestone, you'll see what the old factory used to look like. Part of it's still there. In 1907, the KISS was introduced. That same year, coming up on your left, Hershey Park opened. Today, this is a full-size amusement park. We have 121 acres, 74 rides, 14 of them are roller coasters, and I'll show you some of those in a moment. Zoo America's on your right. It's open year-round except Christmas Day. It's an 11-acre zoo, over 200 North American wildlife animals there. But if you like roller coasters, you all look like your roller coaster enthusiast. Look to your left. You see the red and white steel one? Look at the hump. This is called the Storm Runner. It was the first hydraulic jettison roller coaster built. They strap you into your seat out of the starting gate. They don't pull you up that hill. They don't pull you up that hill like most coast, uh, coasters do. They propel you from zero to 72 miles per hour in two seconds flat. 
184 feet straight up, you hit the top, come down the other side, the rest of the ride they say you don't even care what happens. <laughs> <laughs> they use the exact same launching mechanism on that ride that is used on aircraft carriers to launch airplanes. On your left is the newest addition to our park. Those are our new rides. Uh, one of them is a water roller coaster. The other one is a map racing water slide. This area here is called the East Coast Waterworks, uh, reminiscent of the boardwalks of the East Coast in that area. And then this all wooden racing dueling roller coaster is in its 18th season. It's called Lightning Racer. Two cars, Lightning and Thunder, race on those tracks side by side at over 50 miles per hour. Now the hotel, you can get another quick view of it over the trees to the left front. As I said, we're going up by it. Anybody been up to the hotel? Yeah? Anybody stay at the hotel? Are you there now? Right? We got a bunch of rich people in town. Yeah? I don't know, they just keep coming. Uh, if you get a chance, folks, go up to the hotel. It is a beautiful building. A lot of history there. But if you don't see anything but the fountain lobby, the way the uh, hotel's built, the lobby's up on the second level. You step inside that uh, lobby, I can almost guarantee you, you'll feel like you step back in time. To the right front through the trees, that large building is the world headquarters of the Hershey Company. They moved into this complex in December of 1991. You might be able to view a little building to the right of it on the ridge right there. That is the Hershey Company's Worldwide Computer Center. They moved in there in 1991. Rich believes that the Hershey Company has the most unique computers in the world. So the other day I said, why would you say that? He said, well, I went in. He said, when I walked through the door, I knew I was right. He said, when Hershey built those computers, they didn't build them with Intel chips. They used chocolate chips. <laughs> he said, there's only one byte per chip. There's no megabytes in there. And he said, I also noticed because we've had some extremely hot weather this summer. He said, they had a big sign posted up above the door that uh, to, for everyone coming in to be alert for a major meltdown. So, uh, no. No. I will tell you, Rich writes these jokes. I just tell him. If you don't care for him, you talk to him when you get back to talk about it. By the late 30s, sensing political unrest in Cuba, Mr. Hershey decided to sell it. Took a year longer than he lived. In 1946, his holding sold for a profit of around $17 million. Thirteen years later, Fidel Castro came into power. With Milton in his early 80s, our country got involved in World War II. The government asked him if he would produce a ration bar for our soldiers that would sustain them throughout severe wartime conditions. And he virtually turned over that entire factory downtown to the production of the Hershey Field Ration D-Bar. He put out over three billion of those bars by the end of the war. Over the years of giving tours, I've been very fortunate to have several World War II veterans on the trolley tours, and it's sad because they're uh, not coming like they used to. About three years ago, an old veteran was sitting right here in the front seat. I talked about the bar, and he got a big smile on his face, and I said, Sir, did you eat it? He said, I sure did. And I said, what'd you think of it? And he said, it was okay. And that was a normal response I would get. But I asked him a question. I said, is it true that bar was so hard it would not melt? And he said, definitely. I knew then that uh, several years before that, on the tour, an old veteran sitting clear at the back of the trolley of all places. When I talked about the bar, he hollered and he said, Fred, I'll tell you how hard that bar was. And I said, you go right ahead, sir. He said, that thing came out as hard as it went in. And I said, thanks, buddy. <laughs> 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 I never asked a veteran a question about that bar since then. Hotel again is on your right, over here on your left, the Hershey Gardens. 23 acre botanical rose garden, over 5,000 rose bushes that bloom twice a season. We also have a butterfly house, you'll see it on your left, down the walk. Year round indoor climate controlled butterfly house, owned over 600 butterflies from around the country. We now have hundreds and hundreds of mums blooming. In the spring, we have over 30,000 tulips blooming, and a children's garden in there. It is a beautiful garden to walk through. You get a quick view of the hotel entrance to your right, and then you're going to get a view of our town. Has it cleared up, Rich? And yeah, it's starting to clear up. We're going to stop briefly and point out some things. You can take some pictures if you like, but before we do that, look to the left. You see those uh, 24 yellow silos? It's kind of hazy, but if you look directly over the top, you can still see Founders Hall. We were on the main or south campus. I showed you the high school and the elementary school. Well, coming into view on your right is the middle school, Catherine Hall. 
This is named after his wife, Kitty. It's that large building on the hill overlooking Chaco World. So a lot of us who have lived here uh, for years, we still call this building Senior Hall. This was the original trade school. Up here, Milton's boys could learn any trade they wanted. But in the early 1990s, checking the building, they realized it was time to do some work on it. So in 2000, they vacated it. Started working, but they sadly discovered this building had deteriorated so bad. It was like the old factory downtown that they had to tear it down. And they tore this building down to the ground. The only thing left up here was the steel frame sticking out of the ground from the front part of the building. After putting over $130 million into this, they brought it back to its original appearance. Today, the front of this building looks just like it did when it was completed in 1934. Now, behind that front is a modern middle school that today will accommodate around 900 middle school students. But on the day that World War II ended, Milton stood on the steps to your right, looking out over the town to your left as they celebrated the end of the war. And standing beside him was his best friend, Paul Whitmer, who was his architect. And Milton said, Paul, one of my greatest dreams would be that someday one of my homeboys, and that's how Milton described his voice, he was also way ahead of his time in a cultural reference, right? <laughs> We'll go down that hill and run his company. He never lived to see the dream come true. Shortly after that, he suffered a stroke. He was put in that little hospital I had mentioned earlier on the main campus. And on October the 13th, 1945, at the age of 88 years and one month to the day, Milton Snavely Hershey, the great philanthropist, passed away. As Rich Swings left, look to your right. Through the trees are some large homes on the hill over there. That's our north or middle school campus. We have over 30 of those homes over there, and that's where we're building several more as we speak at a cost of between two and three million dollars apiece. We know today that no less than 10 boys from that school went down that hill to run parts or all of his company. We're sure today Milton would be very proud of what his boys and yes, girls have accomplished over the years. The first eight girls enrolled in this school on March the 14th, 1977. They said that was probably the happiest day for the boys in the history of the school. <laughs> and a school that started in 1910 with four orphan boys has grown to over 2,000 students today, and they are very close to having an equal number of boys and girls. Let's take a quick view of our town. Over here on the right work our way left. That barrel-shaped building back there is our newest arena, the Giant Center. It's in its 16th season. As you can see, lots of things are being set up here, and I'm going to tell you now, if you people 